In today's episode of Homestead How, I'm going to show you some amazing homestead tool innovations. Some really cool things that are going to make you go, wow, I didn't know that was even available. Let's get started. Gary here from Homestead How. Welcome to our homestead. I'm going to show you a quick way, the best way that I have found to butt connect two wires together and keep them waterproof. If you're living on a homestead or not, you've probably run into the situation many times where you got to connect two wires together. I know I've done it many times on our trailer, um, our golf cart, if you're working on a motorcycle or any electrical stuff outside, you want to have a watertight connector. The best way to do that is to solder the wires. To be truthful, I mean, they sell butt connectors where you can butt two wires together and then crimp them, but that's not waterproof. You could do a butt connector and then use some shrink tube like this and put the shrink tube around it and then heat it, but that's still not any better than if you were to solder. Your best way to get a waterproof and really strong connection is to solder. So if I had to go repair our trailer wiring, I'd go out and I'd get this solder gun and then I'd have to plug it in, heat it up, solder the two wires together, and then I'd still have to put a piece of shrink tube over all of that. It's a bunch of extra steps. You don't have to do that anymore because there's this really cool product out there right now. I've used these many times and I love these things. They're called waterproof solder seal wire connectors. Everything in one and it'll save you a bunch of time. And the nice thing is, if you're out working like outside on a trailer or something, you don't want to bring a soldering iron and all that stuff out there. So here's the different connectors. There's red, blue and yellow, and there's different gauges on here. So the one that I'm gonna use the most is probably gonna be the blue because that's 14 gauge wire. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna demonstrate how this works. Now you need a heat gun. You can even use like a torch or something. So here's what you do. You only need a little bit out. We're gonna take the blue, and we're gonna put it in here, and we want the wire to cross the silver part. And then we're gonna do the same thing on this. We want the wire to cross the silver part, just like that. And now we just turn the heat gun on. You can see it shrinking down, making a nice seal. And now the solder's starting to melt too. All right, so this has had some time to cool down a little bit. Hopefully you can see that okay. I'm pulling on this. I'm pulling like as hard as I can and that thing will not come off. That is a, a nice watertight, perfect connection. The solder has permanently connected the two wires together and this outside edge is, is nice and tight against the insulation. You're not gonna get any water in there. I'm literally pulling as hard as I can and okay, pull on this. My hands are slippery. We're pulling as hard as we can, and that thing will not come off. That is a watertight, secure connection. Way better than you'd get if you just used a butt together with no solder. Normally, if you go to strip the wire, I'm gonna demonstrate this real quick. You'd use a wire strippers like this. And this is 14, so you put it in the 14 like that, and then you twist, and you gotta pull. You gotta have some uh, pull like that, right? That's fine, that works pretty well. Another cool tool, that I've been using for about three years on the homestead is this. I got this on Amazon. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below because people always ask. You can get these anywhere probably, but this was a decent one on Amazon. The beauty of this thing is you don't have to sit there and yank on the wire. It holds the wire on one side, crimps down on the other side, and then it pulls it and strips it for you. And you just go like this, and you strip it all in one part. So let me demonstrate real quick. Put the wire in there, and it's stripped. And you can put it in deeper, and strip it deeper. So that side's done. I've already done this side. One last thing, this thing is a lifesaver if you're doing any soldering. It's called um, Helping Hands, and it's just some alligator clips, but there's all these different adjustments on here. So it's really easy to use, and it's called Helping Hands, because it's just that, Helping Hands. You stick a wire in there, you stick the wire in there, and then you can move around and adjust them until they're just perfect. Now if I wanted to solder those together, I could do that easily. Next up I want to talk about my 3M Thinsulate jacket and pants. 
Now this is one of the few things on the homestead a company sent us. I didn't pay for that. A lot of this other stuff like this, all this stuff, I paid for all myself. Sometimes companies will send us stuff and I'll tell them if I really like your product, I'll give you an honest review. If I don't like it, I'm not gonna do a video on it. I'll just, I'm not gonna do anything with it. This product I really like. So I wore this jacket. I'll show some clips on the screen here and these pants that have this Thinsulate technology from 3M. They're super thin pants, but they feel like you're wearing snow pants. They're really warm. And I put them to the ultimate test on last week's video. I went ice harvesting with her friend William and it was literally the coldest day of the year out. It was negative five, and with the wind chill, it was negative 15 degrees out. And we were out for hours on a frozen pond. We were cutting ice chunks out of the pond and pulling them up. We got 180 pound blocks of ice harvested for William and his family. He's gonna use that for off-grid refrigeration. That ice is gonna last him all year. Go check out that video if you want. It was a great video. But my point is, I was wearing the 3M Thinsulate jackets, and after that experience, I swear by those jackets. I could have been on Mount Everest. I was perfectly warm and comfortable in negative 20 degree weather, working the entire day for hours and hours outside in the freezing cold snow. So that's an innovation because back in the day, if you wanted to be that warm, you'd have to wear 10 layers of clothing or you'd have a big puffy like uh, winter jacket on that's got a bunch of cotton and material in it and be sticking out this far. This is a thin, nice tight fitting jacket. So if you're working, it's not getting all crumpled up. And uh, if you're gonna be out camping or hiking through the woods, you, you don't have the big thick snow pants on. They're nice thin snow pants, but with the technology and how they're able to innovate it, it's still extremely warm being that thin. All right, the next tool we have, this ratcheting tool. Does anyone know what this is? Leave a comment down below. Well, I'm gonna tell you anyways. If you do brake work on your homestead like we do, we change all of our own brake pads, you stick this in between the caliper and you crank on it like this, it expands and it opens up slowly and it pushes that piston back so you can get your new brake pad in. Now traditionally most people, including myself, will just use a C-clamp and you put a C-clamp on there, you put an old piece of metal or the old brake pad and you'll push them back that way. That works just fine, but on some brakes there's like a little knob on the end and you can't get that C-clamp on there straight. And if you don't get it on there straight, you could damage that piston. Uh, this is just a better mousetrap. It's a pretty inexpensive tool and you stick it in there, you ratchet it, it opens it right up for you. They sell these on Amazon along with a little S-hook and I bought those as well. And then with the S-hook, you can hang the, um, the old brake caliper up while you're working on the tire so that it's not just hanging there by the, the brake line. All right, the next thing we're gonna show you, this. This is a Blue Eddy Max Oak Power Station. They sell these in all sorts of different sizes and colors and shapes. This thing is great. We've had this for four or five years on the homestead and it's portable power station. You can plug 120 volts AC into it. I could be out in the middle of the woods in the middle of the night and I could plug in a big um, like shop light if I needed light out in the middle of the woods. We use this when we go camping. It gives us 120 volts. You can also plug in your devices to charge them. So it's got DC and AC output. And the cool thing is you can actually plug a solar panel into this to recharge it. You can also, Plug it back into your wall at home when you're not using it and that'll recharge it pretty quickly. It's got a little flashlight on the back, which I don't have it turned on right now. A little flashlight on the back. The other cool thing is the top of this is a charger. So I could take my phone, put my phone on here and it's cordless charging if you have a, a phone that can be cordlessly charged. Chainsaw, right? We use a lot of chainsaws on the homestead. Here's your traditional chainsaw file that you can use to file and sharpen your saw. If you're new and you haven't done this before, it might be a little overwhelming for you. Why is there a flat file and a round file? Well, this flat file is to help you lower your depth gauge on your saw. A lot of people might overlook that if they're new to sharpening chainsaws. So there's a couple steps to it. This will work well, this will get the job done perfectly fine, but here's an innovation. This is a two-in-one chainsaw sharpener. It'll sharpen the chain and it'll also level out your depth gauge. This opens up and you can actually pull the old file out once you've used it fully and you need to replace it. And it's really straightforward. There's little arrows on here and you can see the angle and it shows you exactly where to put this on here and the exact angle. And then you just go back and forth. I don't wanna get filings all over my desk. You go back and forth and you sharpen the saw while you level out the depth gauge. Two-in-one, innovative product. I've been using this for a while in the homestead and I really like it. I've also used these. I've also have a little Dremel tool. This is cool because it does a two-in-one. 
All right, next up, innovative product. Useful every day, wood stove distributes heat from the stove without an external power source. These things are really cool. I showed one of these on our homestead a couple years ago, so I'll do this one really quickly. But you can see right here, you got a wood stove. All the heat goes up to the ceiling. We have cathedral ceilings, so we lose a lot of heat up there. So if you could circulate and push some of that air out down, you can get you can maximize your heat a little bit more instead of just having it all get stuck up in the ceiling. The cool thing with these are they don't use a battery. You don't plug them in. There's an electric motor that turns. It uses electricity, but there's some sort of magical, innovative induction process where the heat is converted into electricity, and there's two wires that go up to the motor, and it turns the motor, and you have a fan. So it distributes heat from the stove without an external power source. I really like this because our wood stove is in the living room, just on the other side of this door from my office, and all the heat goes in the living room. I don't get any in the office. So what I'll do during the day, I'll open the door and I'll aim the fan into my office and it'll push some of that air in here. And you can really tell a difference. Okay, a couple bonus items. This isn't necessarily a tool, but it is an innovation and it's really cool. So we support our homestead through our Airbnb rental. We have a two family. We rent out part of our homestead on Airbnb. People come because they want to get farm fresh eggs and they want to see what it's like on a homestead. And that's great. We have a little area out here for those guests to grill out, but it gets really cold in Wisconsin. So we were looking for some sort of heater that we could offer them out there. Now they have those old propane heaters where they have like a little umbrella on the top and those are kind of cool. But one of the big innovations that's come out recently are these sort of tornado propane heaters. It's a heater and a light. There's a big glass tube up the center of it. It's powered by a propane tank. You turn it on and the flames kind of swirl up. So it looks really cool, puts out a ton of light and a great deal of heat. So we have this one here I'll show on the screen. We put together a while back and I used this the other day. Actually, I was working on the car and it was freezing cold out and I rolled this out next to me and it lit the whole area up. So it's actually a really good work light, but it also heated it up because I was freezing. And now we have this for our Airbnb guests. And it's cool because they've innovated on how the heat works. It's actually like creating this little tornado and it's not going through a ton of propane like you think it would. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll leave links for all of these products in the description below. Please leave a comment down below if you have other interesting or innovative homestead tools that you use. And now, as we do in every episode of Homestead How, here's some of our favorite photos this week on and around our homestead.